to go until the election, and Donald Trump's path to 270 seems to be, well, expanding, at least according to him. We are going to win New York. And that's the first time in many, many years that a Republican can honestly say it. And we're going to do it. We have to do it. We do it. And the election nationwide is over. You heard him. He thinks the state he lost by more than 20 points in 2016 and, by the way, in 2020, is in play. He dedicated a nearly two-hour rally on Long Island tonight to make that very case. And in the immortal words of dodgeball. It's a bold strategy, God. Let's see if it pays off for him. <laughs> Look, who knows if the Trump campaign is serious about New York, and I don't have a crystal ball, but they may want to get serious about what people are calling the actual battleground states. Quinnipiac tonight has Vice President Harris up five in Pennsylvania, also in Michigan. It's razor tight in Wisconsin. And as my friend Harry Enton likes to tell us, if she were to win all three, Trump's goose is probably cooked. The usual caveat applies, of course, that's just one poll. But the campaign, it got another jolt today. It was pretty big news. The Fed all but declared victory in the war on inflation. They finally cut interest rates, this time by half a point. The U.S. economy is in a good place, and, and our, our decision today is designed to keep it there. The U.S. economy is in a good place. Well, if voters start to feel bad in the world of feelonomics, it could maybe boost Harris. Now, Trump has said that he wants interest rates to come down if he's reelected. He thinks that lowering borrowing costs would also be good. So he must be happy, right? I guess it shows the economy is very good if you cut it by that much. Uh, assuming they're not just playing politics, the uh, economy would be very bad, or they're playing politics, one or the other. But there was a big cut. Well, the Fed said they're actually not playing politics. And apparently, neither are the Teamsters. For the first time since 1996, the powerful union has decided to sit this one out. No endorsement for a presidential candidate. And that's going to end a nearly three decades long streak of Teamsters backing Democrats for president. Is that good or bad then? Lots to get to with my panel for tonight. We have associate.